Hey, how you guys doing? Um, before I get to the main uh, topic, uh, I want to do a quick update uh, on my last video, which was uh, Black Magic Design Da Vinci Resolve 14. Uh, a couple things I forgot to put in there. Um, believe it or not, I do suffer from uh, short-term memory loss, so I've got to make notes. And uh, fortunately, I some of this stuff I didn't put in there, but um, something actually very interesting. Um, for one thing, um, uh, the new DaVinci Resolve 14 does support Apple Metal. Uh, for you guys that don't know where Metal is, perhaps. Um, Metal is Apple's version of uh, something similar to Vulkan, I guess, where the, operati the operating system has direct access to the GPU rather than going through the CPU, and which means it's going to be um, faster response times, faster rendering, and things like that. So that's some great news. Um, keep in mind it is in beta uh, according to some of the comments in my last video. Some people have been having trouble using it. Um, and I think I did have trouble using it once, but on the most part it, it worked for me pretty well. Uh, so I think somebody mentioned, you know, how fast it was. And I have been noticing faster response times in several key key things now. Keep in mind, it does say up to 10 times as fast, depending on many um, variables. So keep that in mind. It's not just going to automatically be 10 times fast all the time, uh, just to let you know. Now, most interestingly, they dropped the price. Now, this is in the Mac App Store. Um, the DaVinci Resolve, uh, well, I think currently the current version, um, they actually re reduced it down twice. Now it's actually $300. Um, so it looks like they're competing perhaps a little bit with Apple Final Cut Pro 10, which is a good thing. I primarily use um, Final Cut Pro 10. It's the fastest uh, for me to use, but I do kind of uh, love dabbling in DaVinci Resolve. Now, a lot of times, if sometimes when software comes out, for, for instance, in, in the Mac App Store, sometimes they don't put necessarily all the little features there might be some slightly missing from the studio version uh, which i've heard uh, by several people before but considering the uh, huge price drop it still may be more than worth it uh, in doing this and um yep and that's what, what i wanted to cover in the uh the, uh, the last video um, now this new video, uh, of course, recently I've been talking about some new video cards coming out in instance uh, with the NVIDIA card, the Titan XP, and obviously they're updated Pascal drivers for the Mac. Now we're actually going to take a look at the AMD now, and uh, let me switch pictures real quick, uh, which is the Radeon Pro Duo, and... This should be coming out, uh, I don't know if they said it was May or the next month or two. And um, now AMD is touting this is the first dual GPU designed for professionals. And uh, it's en entirely based on the Polaris, ah, uh, okay, if I can see that word, architecture. Okay, I said it right this time. Um, I'm going uh, gonna to give you some quick specs. Of course, everybody likes specs, right? Um, 4,608 streaming processors, uh, 32 gigabytes of video RAM, uh, DDR5. Of course, that's split up between both GPUs, 16 gigabytes a piece, uh, 11.5 tetraflops of processing power. Um, and this is most important. It can drive up to two 8K monitors now. Depending now, if you're driving two 8K monitors, that may take some of the processing power away. So, but it's great for people who um, are thinking of or going to 8K, and then obviously you're going to go probably to 4K or whatever. So this is going to be important for these people to be able to drive an 8K monitor, and it's also going to be twice as fast as the previous cards. Um, now. Now, the con of this, it doesn't seem to have any Mac drivers. Now, uh, this may be due to, um, of course, the previous 2013 Mac Pro not having slots. Of course, Apple has said they are coming out with 
a new Mac Pro in the next year or two. Of course, we don't know if they're going to use PCIe slots or their own proprietary or whatever, well, but we'll see. But this may just only be temporary, and it's kind of funny because um, Apple's been using AMD uh, for quite a while now, and which is uh, they also optimize for OpenCL, and so we'll see uh, on that. Now, lately, that within the last two generations of their workstation graphic cards, uh, first thing I noticed is they don't call it Fire Pro, and so that kind of made me wonder: well, is it going to be? you know, uh, not a workstation card, but I think uh, the name change is, for some reason they're doing it. I tell you the truth, I like when they use a work, uh, you know, Fire Pro for the AMD, Quattro for the NVIDIA, because that tells you right away, most professionals know, okay, it's a workstation graphic card. They're kind of getting away from those names. I'm not saying it's, if it's good or bad, but it, you know, it makes it kind of confusing some, sometimes. Of course, what makes a workstation card a workstation card is uh, custom drivers, uh, better support, and guaranteed support in certain pro applications. And now, of course, there's some cards, uh, even in the, especially with the NVIDIA uh, series, even their Titans and their high-end cards that are not Quattros it can still be used for and are being used for um, professional applications. It's just simply that um, it has a higher level of support and everything like that. Now, what's very interesting is the price point of this card is going to be um, uh, $999, which is um, actually very competitive even with the uh, NVIDIA, even with the uh, Titan XPs at 1200 but you're actually getting a workstation graphic card um, for that price. So, yeah. Uh, that's the uh, update from the last video and AMD's new uh, Radeon Pro Duo.